Dr. Chauncey Crandall is the writer of the book Raising the Dead. Raising the Dead puts itself forward as a book that gives evidence on how Dr. Chauncey Crandall has experienced many instances where Western medicine has failed, only to have God miraculously bring dead people back to life. What the book actually does is provide two instances of supposed faith healing, while the rest of the book consists of the Crandall family trying to find some sort of cure or miracle for their young son, Chadwick Crandall, who is diagnosed with cancer. They never get that miracle, and sadly, Chadwick Crandall died. I've been challenged to show possible cause that Dr. Chauncey Crandall may not be honest in his claims. It has been stated to me that there is no reason why he would make such a story up, a reason that provides sufficient cause to not accept that God does miracles. I accept that challenge. A little background on Dr. Crandall first. Dr. Crandall is trained as a doctor and cardiologist. In fact, he did some of his fellowship at New York City's Mount Sinai Hospital. He isn't some Kent Hovind University graduate. You can't just toss him in with the pop-offs and Hovinds of the world. Dr. Crandall claims that in 2006, a patient came into the ER, collapsed dead from a heart attack, and could only be brought back to life by the power of prayer. Now, despite the claim that he is a world-renowned cardiologist, I haven't had much luck finding anything written by him or about him that didn't come from a conservative Christian website, show, or blog. The same goes for his private practice, the Palm Beach Cardiovascular Clinic. Outside of the usual website mentions you get listing out area businesses, all I could find was a PDF from a court case involving a ruling by a judge on a contract dispute between the clinic and a former employee. What I didn't find are any mentions of peer-reviewed articles by Dr. Crandall, nor any publicity regarding his professional life outside of promoting Christianity and the products he markets and sells. But for promoting Christianity and the products he sells, I found many pages about Dr. Crandall and his miracle experiences, both by him and by others. The majority of these pages also conveniently mention his aforementioned book. These sites will often mention Dr. Crandall's online newsletter or offer online tests that inevitably lead to offering you a subscription for his newsletter that sells for about $50 a year. So we've got a doctor who out of the blue announces he's been part of a miraculous healing by God in a country that boasts that at least 70% of the population is Christian. A doctor who, because of that claim, has gotten numerous interviews on talk shows, radio shows, news shows, hundreds of blogs written about him, has been offered and taken the position of contributing writer on what is one of the top Christian conservative news sources that boasts tens of millions of hits a month, all of which is free advertising for not just his services as a doctor, but also for the book he's written that goes for $12 a pop, plus the newsletter he puts out at a cost of roughly $50 for a year's subscription. Just on a quick cost-profit analysis, if we think casually about how much he would have had to have paid for this sort of advertising to get the increase in client base that he's getting from solidly connecting himself to the conservative Christian movement, especially the charismatics. When you take into consideration all the wealth he gets from that connection, from the additional traffic to his businesses, subscribers to his newsletter, and purchases of his book, man, that's a lot of money. That is definitely good reason to wake up one day and say, to hell with it. I'll compromise my ethics and pander to the conservative Christian base by making up some stories about God bringing people back to life. Shoot, you've got to wonder how much money all this I'm a doctor who believes in miracles fanfare is generating not just for his personal pocket, but also for the Chadwick Foundation. Oh, did I forget to mention that? Dr. Crandall has a charity he started named after his son who passed away after battling cancer. It's called the Chadwick Foundation. The Chadwick Foundation lists four other charities it is connected to. One which is a name with no internet site and therefore no way to research it. Two that are unrated charities. And the third is Christ for All Nations. The charity founded by Reinhard Bonk, the charismatic faith healer. Christ for All Nations boasts a whopping one out of a possible five stars on the Charity Navigator's rating scale. 
The Chadwick Foundation, like the other three charities, also has no rating. The Chadwick Foundation boasts that it has a medical clinic called Clinica Shad set up in Medellin, Colombia. I did some rather extensive online searching for anything that indicates that the Chadwick Foundation's Clinica Shad actually exists and has done some sort of work, and I found nothing. Which isn't all that surprising. A small clinic in that town may very well not be on the internet, although I'm surprised that a publicity-oriented person like Dr. Chauncey Crandall would pass up an opportunity to put up photos of people working at Clinica Shad to help generate donations for the charity. Searches for Clinica Shad and the Chadwick Foundation only turned up a Tumblr link to some pictures of Dr. Crandall, dressed in blue scrubs with captions that try to give the impression that Dr. Crandall healed Haiti earthquake victims by laying on hands. But nothing on the Chadwick Foundation in Medellin, Colombia. I tried calling Colombia, but ran into the problem of not speaking the local dialect, so I reached out to someone with the necessary language skills who went ahead and called Medellin, Colombia information to ask for the phone number and address to La Clinica Shot. That person was Dio Anding Cole. You may know him here on YouTube. He did quite a good job of looking into the matter, and what he got back was that no phone number was listed for that clinic or record of the existence of that clinic. Which doesn't mean it isn't there, but it does strike me as curious. Oh, I did mention that Dr. Crandall went to Haiti to offer his services as a doctor. I think the main thing is try to identify with a group that is on the ground and has a long-term commitment to Haiti. You know, there are many great organizations out there, but are they committed long-term and do they have relationships on the ground working with local people there. Those are the people that I would donate money to and give assistance. And, and what they need right now is really cash. They don't need you to send rice or black beans. It's difficult to get that over there. But they need your money. And I would identify with many of the missionary groups that are on the ground, many of the churches that are there, uh, the Red Cross and other relief organizations that have a long-term commitment to see Haiti turn around. I'm going to run with his advice and offer a list of reputable charities that are actually doing good work in Haiti that helps with rebuilding. I'll provide you a link to this page on Charity Navigator that tells you how to donate wisely. You'll notice that neither the Chadwick Foundation or its connected charities appear on that list. There are other groups doing good work in Haiti that aren't on that list. For example, Cuba sent doctors to help out with the relief effort and has had people on the ground in Haiti helping to train medical personnel for years. Yes, I'm aware that many of you will say that Fidel Castro has the ulterior motive of sending aid so that he can build friendships, gain favor, and in the end run turn a profit for himself and his country. And I say, you're absolutely right. I have no problem with Fidel Castro using his charitable work to boost his own profits or with Dr. Chauncey Crandall using his visits to Haiti to bring himself greater publicity. But there does come a moment when you have to look at the why behind the what and determine if the good works a person does can be defined as simply good. As to if the good Dr. Crandall did in Haiti is overbalanced by the bad he does by offering support to the morally reprehensible con artist industry that is faith healing, well, that is hard to determine at just a casual glance. With a faith healer like Peter Popoff, the harm being done is clear, and the scales tip easily with Popoff weighing down the guilty side with plenty of pounds to spare. But Dr. Crandall? It is not as straightforward a scenario. This is America, a land where when it comes to Christianity, the goalposts for proof of morally questionable behavior are raised higher. What would be considered outright criminal behavior when secular is often given a wink and a nod or at least a look the other way by those in power once the label of Christian faith is tacked onto it. What Dr. Crandall believes is open to dispute, but I do think I've laid to rest any claims that there is no logical reason why Dr. Chauncey Crandall would lie about his witnessing of miracles. This is the true Puka coming to you from Times Square in New York City saying, check the facts. In the absence of facts, be circumspect.